So in Fusion 360 you can copy components and you can copy and paste bodies. And the behavior of those is different. And it's also different depending on what mode you are in. Uh, by default, all designs in Fusion 360 start in with the uh, design history being captured or generally also known as timeline mode. But you can also turn this off. You can actually turn this off in two places. You can right click here on the browser and select do not capture design history or you can click on this gear icon and also can turn off the timeline and then you are in direct modeling mode and there's no recording. Uh, another thing before we start that has to be mentioned is in Fusion 360 whatever you do you already are in a component. Each new design already is its first component. So with that in mind, let's just create a simple object. And there we have our first body. And remember, we are in direct modeling mode. So we can see that behavior in the browser when I highlight a face, an edge, or vertex. It highlights the body. If I select the face, it uh, makes these breadcrumb selections here to the body. But I cannot actually right-click and select copy. That menu option isn't there. So in order to copy a body, I have to select it in the browser, right click and say copy. So now I can do several things, um, but I'm just going to right click here in the browser and say paste. And that pastes that uh, body into the active component, which in this case is the upper level component indicated here by that radio button. So, in this case, I can just go ahead and manipulate that body number one, and we see body number two stays the same, so they're independent copies of each other. So let's delete this body, and let's create a component. And I'm going to activate the top level again. So I'm going to copy this body by selecting it and copying it and I'm pasting it into that component. There are two ways to do this. I can either activate the component or if I don't want to do that I can simply hover with the mouse over the component, right click and say paste. And it gives it a different color because it's in a different component. This body is in the top level component and the green body here is in a lower level component. So again, I can modify this component, but we can see they're independent copies. So let's delete this component. And let me create a new component. And here's something that you can do in direct modeling mode, but you may not want to do that with the timeline enabled. You can take that body and pull it into that component. Restructuring an assembly is definitely easier in direct modeling mode. So with that said, I have my component number one, or actually it's called number two. Let's call it number one. And I'm going to create another component. I'm going to take that body from the first component, copy it, right click, and again when it right clicks, when I right click, it pastes it into the active component, which is this one here. And again, they also have a different color. So I can just try to modify component number one, but we can see they're still independent copies. So let me delete this component and try something else. I'm just going to simply copy a component. So there are different ways I can select a component. I can either right click on it on the, in the browser and click select copy, or I can double click on it in the viewport and then copy it. And again, pasting is the same thing. I right click and paste it and that pastes it into the active component.
So in this case, we can see that they have the same color, yet they're in two different components. And the reason for that is, in this case, they're linked copies of each other. So I can modify either the original, or I can modify the copy, but they both reference the same data set. So once I've done that, and I decide, no, I want this independent indirect modeling mode, you can right click on that component that you want to make independent and there's a menu option make independent. Again, this only exists in direct modeling mode. So now they're independent copies and I can uh, manipulate them independently. Another thing that we need to keep in mind, we cannot actually paste a component into itself. So I cannot just actually select a component, copy it, and then try to paste it into itself. That, uh, that option just doesn't exist. So it, that also doesn't make a lot of sense. What you can do, however, as we've seen before, you can actually copy that body and paste it into the same component. But again, they're independent copies, in this case, in direct modeling mode. Let's see how this works in timeline mode then. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create some uh, very simple geometry, another rectangle that I'm going to extrude into a box. I'm also going to turn component color cycling on. And after the extrusion, the sketch is automatically hidden and I'm going to show it again. And here we have our body. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. The selection behavior in the viewport uh, or in the browser is the same as in direct modeling mode. You highlight any of these faces, edges, vertices. Um, it highlights the body. You select it, you get this breadcrumb selection down. Oops, I selected the sketch. You get this breadcrumb selection down to the body. If you want to highlight a component, you have to double click it, and that would actually be this component. But we want to copy and paste the body, so I select it in the viewport, copy it, and then I'm going to paste it. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to change the sketch and we can see that uh, those are linked, those bodies are linked, which is very different from direct modeling mode because in direct modeling mode by default they are not linked. So in this case I change the source geometry, they are linked. I can also change the extrusion feature, but we'll see that it changed the other body as well. So let's see how this behavior looks like when we create a component and then copy and paste the body into that component. So in this case they have a different color. But again I'm going to modify the sketch and in this case also, even though they are in different, compon in different components, the bluish body is in the top level component and this pink body is in a lower level component, they're still linked. Okay, so let's try another thing. I'm going to create a new component and earlier in direct modeling mode, I said you may not want to take a body and move it into a component. Uh, in timeline mode, if you have a sketch that was used to create a body, you take the sketch and pull it into the component. And then it pulls the body with it. Uh, that, however, functions only if there's no other relationship between that body and another body. If you, for example, copied the body before it was in that component, 
and then you try to pull that original body into the component, that won't work. But in this case, it does. Um, so let's create another component and take the body from the first component and copy it into the second component, uh, sorry, paste it into the second component. And there it is. So again, both of them have a different color. And again, if I modify the sketch, they are still linked. Even though the sketch is only in the first component and there's only a body in the second component, those two bodies are referencing the same source. Let's try something else. Let's delete this component. And let's copy a complete component In that case, we can see that both components contain all the features and items that were in the first component. Basically, both components reference the same data set, the same bodies, the same sketches. Whatever you put in each component is going to be the same. So, for example, if I create a fillet on this component, I create a fillet in the second component or I create that same fillet in the second component, I also create it in the first component. They are identical data sets. So this is where copy and paste new comes into play. When you copy an existing component, then select paste new, it creates a fully independent copy. Initially, that copy contains all the same items, all the same bodies, sketches, and other features uh, of that original component, but you can add any features and you can add edit existing features fully independent from that second component. You might have noticed that when I was working in direct modeling mode, I used push-pull to edit geometry, and in, uh, in timeline mode, I edited the dimensions of the sketch to modify geometry. And the reason for that is, uh, let me start a new file. The reason for that is when we turn off the timeline, pushing and pulling after creating a sketch is really the only way that you can create or change existing geometry. So I'm creating a new body here. Uh, a simple cube, I picked uh, one of the primitives here, uh, the box, and it looks like there is a sketch while we're creating this document, but as soon as I finish that operation, that sketch is gone. Uh, it's not accessible anymore. So when you use a primitive, most definitely there's no other way to uh, modify geometry than using push-pull in direct modeling mode. Now, let's quickly go ahead and uh, Just use a sketch, just for demonstrative purposes. We create a object using a sketch, and that sketch is still here. And I can uh, change the sketch, but it doesn't do anything um, to the body. So again, either way, I can only modify geometry um, by using push-pull or any of the other direct modeling operations. However, in uh, in timeline mode, this is, this is different. As we can see, both of those bodies are linked. So the first component has a sketch in it, but the second component only has a body in it. So basically, when we copy and paste that body, we copy and paste an existing data set. What you can do in that second component, you can actually add a feature to that existing data set, um, but this uh, these bodies are still linked. So in this case, if I use push-pull to edit this body and make it longer, I'm actually adding a feature to this particular body, to this particular component. 
if I activate that component, we see that that timeline only shows those uh, operations that are uh, that belong to that component. However, when I edit this, these dimensions here, we can see that the base geometry is still linked to that original body. So that's actually a very powerful feature and the reason why, why the behavior between direct modeling mode and timeline mode are different when you copy a body from one component to another.